It's more than just your output, more than a mic. When you hear your shout out, you know it's all right. Put on your magic pants and let's go. We're cruising into the power zone. Clip in, set yourself free. Come on and take a ride with me. You know what you need to know and what's it all about. Everything you need, it's on the clip out. Welcome to the Clip Out Podcast, episode 293. This is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe. Hi. Well, hello. So I guess we should start by talking about, um, we have another meetup coming up. You'll have a little bit more advanced notice on this one. You do. Yeah, so you I have actually no, have quite a bit. No excuses. You have 14 and a half weeks. Not that you're counting because it's all. tied to your marathon. It's going to be tied to Big Sur and it's not a marathon. I'm Sorry. running 21 miles. So for all of you out there that say, well, that's not quite a marathon. <laughs> that is true. It is not. It's tied to your marathon asterisk. <laughs> Let's just say 21 miler. Okay. <laughs> it's tied to your Iron Man. I'm just going to make up things. It's tied to your ultra marathon. No. <laughs> it's tied to your NASCAR event. Oh, my God. Yep. Yep, I'm going to drive around in circles. It's tied to your miles. Olympic weightlifting trials. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway. So, so, we will be in California in the San Jose area mm -hmm. come April. We will. And it's, so, we're going to we're gonna have a meetup. We haven't picked a place yet. Uh-huh. That's, that's coming up. It's coming up, but we have someone assisting us. We do. Uh, and, and here's looking at you, Tim Shaughnessy. Yes. No pressure. And uh, Tim will be putting a uh, poll out on the Clip Out group. So keep an eye out for that because there will be input needed yes. from anyone who wants to come. We don't know where it will be, but we do know we can guarantee you mm -hmm. they will have chicken wings. That is true. Or they won't have me. <laughs> It'll uh, be one of the two things. That, that's fair. <laughs> also, we do know San Jose, and we do know the 28th, and we do know four to six-ish. It's going to be more of a happy hour thing, because yeah. then we have to drive to Monterey, so it's about an hour and a half, we've been told. Yes. So uh, so we will do it earlier in the evening, so then we can drive. So ask off now. Ask off now. Take the afternoon off. Come yeah. drink with us. It'll Burn be amazing. PTO. Yeah. yeah. It'll be so fun. Yes. So I'm very excited. Can't yeah. wait. Absolutely. So uh, what, pray tell, do you have in store for people this week? Actually, I want to start with our interview with Kirsten Beverly Waters. Uh, she is joining us now. You, that name might sound familiar. You well, might... yeah, because we talked to her like I... Remember that? I meant to the listeners. Oh, to the, that makes yeah, way I hope worse. it sounds familiar to you. I mean, it doesn't all. You know how I am. <laughs> facts yeah but i know kirsten stands out to you because kirsten uh did an amazing thing i mean an amazing thing 22 times uh kirsten broke the world record for the most number of consecutive consecutive 50 k's so like one a day one a day for, for 20 for 22 two days. days i get winded just saying that yeah so you need to listen to the interview later and find out why kirsten did that so you can understand where they are coming from it's an amazing story and i'm so excited to be able to share it absolutely and then topic wise we've got all sorts of updates from the world of peloton oh peloton coming in hot with this new cheese cheese this new <laughs> chief marketing <laughs> officer uh i guess leslie will be the new head cheese um and <laughs> <Of> then <marketing. laughs> um and then there are a bunch of updates on instructors everything going on we have a visit from dr jen a uh, very very special topic working out while working through grief uh, and then there's more updates on things happening in the pillow world and we have a visit from metpro slash angelo oh this is an interesting one this week i mean it's an interesting one every week but it's a little Thanks, different Tom. it's a little different <laughs> it is a little different because we thought we'd give you a window into what it's like to have a session with a metpro coach so this week angelo goes through uh a weekly update with me and crystal yeah have you crystal ever wondered me, have if, you ever wondered how much i weigh today you get to find out yeah same with me yeah i get guilted into saying how much i weigh yeah it well fun. it's not guilt it's more an act of he, solidarity yeah, that's what he said at the time. I think we're hearing the true colors no, now. I just was like, I can't, <laughs> I can't leave you hanging out there, you know. So 
I'm uh, the braver of the two of us. We both know this. We do both know that. Yeah. <laughs> like in our house, you kill the bugs. <laughs> I don't kill the bugs. Depends on what they look like. If yeah. it's really bad, I'm sending you. We, in. we call. We hire out. <laughs> We bring in an outsider to kill the bugs. Like I will kill no bugs, not because I'm woo woo, but because they're creepy. And then now they're you see their guts, even their little hands at you. And so, but then if a bug is too creepy, we bring in a third party. Yeah, yeah. somebody's got to come kill it. Hire the professional, or so. they can even remove it. It's just got to be far away. Yes. Yeah. So uh, before, so shameless plugs. Before we get to all that, don't forget we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Google Podcasts, iHeart, tune in wherever you find a podcast. You can find us, Overcast. Hey, Overcast listeners. Hi. Uh, you can also find, uh, while you're there, follow us so you never miss an episode. Maybe leave us a review. That's super helpful for the people that come along after you so they know that we're worth checking out. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash the clip out. While you're there, like the page, join the group. Uh, if you'll, if you'll, are so inclined maybe share an episode in your social media stream that's super helpful to us as well if you like peloton chances are you have friends or loved ones that also like peloton you make them aware that hey here's a thing that's out there so you, you can talk hear people talk about peloton and not bore your non-peloton friends right mm-hmm. uh, you can also find us on patreon patreon.com slash the clip out where you can get ad free episodes uh, you'll get them a little bit earlier when we have them early you get them early and you also get bonus content by doing that and then finally don't forget our youtube channel youtube.com slash the clip out where you can watch these episodes in beautiful hd so there's all that let's uh Let's dig in, shall we? We shall. Peloton in the news. Peloton this week appointed a new chief marketing officer. Coming in hot with the hire, Peloton. I love it. Okay, so Leslie Burland was Mm -hmm. the chief marketing officer, actually, over at Twitter. And before that, she was the head of people from 2017 to 2021. So she was like... Did a lot of things over there. Yeah. Um, but now, now she is a Peloton. I think this is, is a great hire just based on the resume. Like, obviously, we don't know her. She's won awards. Yeah. Like, she's amazing. Yeah, I'm we've very won ex- awards. <laughs> like, that could mean anything. And we're amazing. Oh, oh well. I mean, us, yeah. at least some people think we're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh but especially like, you know, Twitter right now is uh, a bit of a dumpster fire. Don't know if you've noticed. They're literally auctioning off their office mm. supplies online. I saw it didn't, today. Didn't see that. That's yeah. terrible. You want to buy a neon Twitter bird? No. Sure. Seventeen fifty. Ugh. Plus gross. shipping. It's yours. So uh, I made up the price. Don't, okay. Yeah. But. But they are auctioning off a knee on Twitter bird. So anyway, my larger point is <laughs> there was great staff over there that found themselves unemployed. And I think that based on that pedigree, this seems like a great acquisition. It absolutely does. Good for Peloton for scooping her up while while the scooping opportunity was there. Very excited to see uh, what what is up her sleeve? Well, she's wearing a sleeve. Well, she has no shirt. sleeves on in this picture, yeah. so apparently nothing's up her sleeve. Oh, my God. What are they doing? Well, only in this picture. Okay. I'm sure there have been days that Where she's she has wore worn sleeves, sleeves. You think? Okay. I do. I do. Okay. I feel confident. I hope so. I Leslie's, don't know. San Fran- San Leslie's Francisco. not going to let us down. San Francisco, it's, it's nope, pretty warm, nope, nope. so she I might feel, not need sleeves. I feel confident. Leslie's not going to let us down. Okay. okay. Oh, but now she's nope. in New York. Mm- it doesn't listen to so, me. But I'm saying she's in San Francisco, right? No sleeves. Now she's in New York sleeves. She's ready. She's, she's ready. ready. She came in sleeves loaded. Yep. Yep. Problem solved. <laughs> Dear God. If, if, I'm just thinking she's in charge of marketing and she's like, let me listen to what this fan podcast is all a sweet baby snow peas. What are they t- doing? Yeah. Sorry, Leslie. <laughs> this was supposed to go a different way yeah tom goes rogue just so you know it's not always like this Mm. okay i'm sorry by not always i mean it's always like this it's not like this when i'm talking (laughs) (laughs) so it's only like this 50 percent of the time there you go okay peloton has been testing milestone notifications for live classes yes and it's really important that we point out that it's live classes because if one more person says to me (laughs) but i already had this i know yeah i freaking know read (laughs) the comments it is 
new because it's on live classes. That's why you're going to start seeing things like 2000th ride, not 8th ride or third day in a row. Much bigger, much bigger milestones. Reportedly, last night, there was a live class that Cody did Mm -hmm. and there were hundreds of these that went down the leaderboard. So people are already like, we are begging you, please put a filter on this. We need a filter because it takes up your whole feed. Right. Yeah, yeah. I bet. I, I understand. And you know how I understand, guys? Because you know how um, I've explained about my stalker? That's how I feel. Yeah. It just keeps going <laughs> the whole time I'm trying to ride. You can't ignore it because it's just scrolling by. Yeah. So I get it. I really do. But in general, though, if you wanted to quickly give people a high five, this is a great way to do it. And imagine you're an instructor. This is how they feel. Yeah, I was <laughs> thinking this has to be a window into what what it looks like for an instructor for yeah. all, they've probably had a version of this so they know who to shout out they, right they definitely yeah. had a version of this for a long time yeah. uh yeah and now theirs shows up in the leaderboard so they can see it as they're looking at the leaderboard this is on i know you don't ride tom so i'm just right. giving you a little bit of of info this shows up on the rider's left side of the screen and so this is where you get um like your high fives on the right side of the screen is where you have your leaderboard what people are already asking for is can we have it as like on the leaderboard maybe with a different color so that we know that it's there I think people are just kind of missing that like this is new, probably going to be a while right. before we get to and change it. They're testing it. So like right. maybe it will change. Like they're seeing you may, maybe because this is just a, something somebody saw and they sent to us like maybe there's another version of this out there. There, right? there could be. Um, and again, this is only in live classes. And again, we are only seeing it on the bike. We are not seeing this yet on the tread or the rower. But there are no live classes on the rower right. yet. Okay. All right. I think I got all of my caveats. Okay. You've got been, some sticklers out there. You've been caveated. <sighs> Peloton is going to be at the National Running Show, or I should say Peloton UK is going to turn out at the National Running Show. Yes. And uh, this is going to be at the NEC Birmingham. Uh, Susie Chan is going to be hosting and talking about all things running. You can actually book your tickets. Everyone who gets to go is so lucky. (sighs) Susie Chan is my girl. I love her so much. And I'm so excited she gets to do this. Apparently, it's not the first time she has hosted. So it's pretty exciting for everyone. I feel like we talked about this last year, maybe. I don't know. We may have, but yeah, like, I mean, it's an annual thing. Not like we oh, forgot, totally, talked totally. about it twice, but, but yeah, I guess it's really, it's only the national running show for our UK listeners. Exactly. For, for everyone else. It's the international running show. That is true. That is true. Maybe someday we'll get to go. That, that would be would, amazing. That would be great. Oh, I would love to meet Susie. Last week we talked about the new rules for booking in studio classes we did and since then we've seen an a, a sample of what it looks like when you reach your limit yep peloton was nice enough to send over a screenshot so we know that at the top it's going to say you are registered for the maximum number of classes for this week try a later week see i think they did this in response to me reporting that it was going to be robin arzan just waving her finger at you yeah i think they could have so That's they were true. like we can't but they should switch to that <laughs> you just get a gif of and it's gif to, to be clear it is yeah like you can yeah. say something else and enjoy being wrong right uh but uh but it's just a gif of robin arzan nope uh-uh, uh-uh. no well i am really excited about this it starts tomorrow now we're we're recording on wednesdays like we always do so this actually officially starts tomorrow and i'm curious to hear how it goes because we're now seeing a a we're seeing a totally different booking process and we know that this is for classes in february so we're going to be able to see a larger booking window because that's when the booking window now begins in february so uh good luck to everyone at noon eastern you will have already done it by the time you hear this but i am excited to hear how it went for people i'm sure they'll complain mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's tradition there are going to be some people that are just excited there are going to be some people that are like that was much better and it's it's they're going that's going to yeah. happen i'm just anyone who doesn't gonna doesn't get in is going to be like this doesn't work yeah well and it's <laughs> it's like let me be clear it's never going to be enough right uh, there's never going to be enough supply to match the demand it's, so like we all just need to wrap our heads around it it's always going to be tough it's like a taylor swift ticket it is it's actually harder than a taylor swift ticket peloton will have live beginner classes this january 
they sure will. And um, not only will they be doing that, but part of the exciting thing is, is that Peloton put out a video that that showed instructors talking about they were going to be doing these live beginner classes. Everyone got very excited because Ash Pryor is in this video. Ash Pryor teaches rowing. That means rower classes are coming. Maybe We're going to have gonna them ha- live. They should just have her do a strength class to mess with people. Oh, my God. People would just <laughs> lose their shit. Yeah, That's that would what be would great. Happen. It'd, It'd be mean, so funny. It would. Leslie Brand, Leslie Berland, you should... <laughs> You should listen to that idea. Yeah, just have her do a strength class like, just to piss people off. It's day two for Leslie. Let's and let's just, let's wait for the hijinks. Save it till <laughs> April first. And, <laughs> and then at the end of the class, she can just pop up and be like, "Hi, I'm Leslie. This was my idea." <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Getting the psychological edge with Dr. Jen. Joining us today via the magic of ZoomTube is Dr. Jen Mann, licensed marriage, family, and child therapist, and sports psychology consultant. You may know her from VH1's Couples Therapy with Dr. Jen or VH1's Family Therapy with Dr. Jen or her long-running radio show, The Dr. Jen Show. She's written four best-selling books, including The Relationship Fix, Dr. Jen's Six-Step Guide to Improving Communication, Connection, and Intimacy. It's Dr. Jen. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. So I have a question that is going to call on the psychology side of things and the sports psychology side of things. It's a toughie. I love it. Okay. Uh, okay. Put through her paces. It, it is. is. It is. Okay. So this is from Karen D. Donato, and she did say I could use her name. Um, she says she has a question for Dr. Jen. Her wife died at 55 four months ago after a year-long battle with esophageal cancer. I I'm so sorry for you, Karen. Um, Karen was her caretaker and uh, she did hospice at home and Karen watched her die. She's 49 and a widow. She's broken hearted and deeply mourning. She forces herself to work out because she's happiest when she's in motion. As someone who has clinical depression in the past, she forces herself to work out every other day. Yet some days are just much too difficult for her to handle and she struggles in her workouts. She's afraid to not push herself for fear of getting depressed. Most days she's exhausted because all of her brain power seems to be going into the morning process. How can she know when it's okay to let her body rest as a form of self-care during this difficult time versus when it's okay to push through it? Karen in Maine. Oh, geez. Well, first of all, Karen, my heart goes out to you. You have my deepest condolences and I'm just... I'm so, so sorry that you have had this terrible, terrible loss. And it's not that you are already predisposed to depression anyway. And now to go through this, there is a normal, healthy grieving process that you have to go through. I think on the positive side, in terms of your own mental health, it's great that you realize that exercise and movement is really helping you. So that's fantastic. And I I think it's important for you to think of the movement as medicine. Regarding when you know when it's time to just say, like, I'm out, like, I can't do this today versus when you should push yourself because you know that the movement is helping you is that what I would recommend is that commit to doing something for five minutes, because sometimes just getting your clothes on is the hard part or just walking yourself into whatever room you have your Peloton or your yoga mat. And I would start with something gentle, maybe commit to on those days where it's just feeling so hard. Just do a five minute stretch class or five minute yoga class and then see where that takes you. Because sometimes once you just start, it kind of takes you down the Peloton rabbit hole and really good things happen. And you're like, oh, you know what? When you finish that class, they suggest another class. You're like, oh, you know what? I think I'll do that 10 minute class. Oh, you know what? I'll try that 20 minute class and that can help you. I think it's really important that exercise is not your only therapy. I'm hoping that You're already doing the things I'm going to suggest, but just in case I'm putting them out there. Individual psychotherapy, super important right now. If you have a history of clinical depression, meeting with a psychiatrist to see if meds are appropriate for you, if your depression is so bad that you are struggling to get out of bed, because sometimes we get so depressed that we can't do the work we need to do to work through the grieving and actually participate in the grieving process. And that's really important. And then the other thing is I 
would recommend joining a grief and loss group, that there are a lot of really amazing grief and loss groups, and that there's something about being in a room with other people, especially young widows like you, that is really helpful to know that you are not alone. And it can feel especially alone when you lose a partner. And making sure that you are surrounding yourself with your support system, that you're asking for help. My best friend's husband died when she was in her mid thirties. She was a, a very young widow as well. And I remember when I said to her, like, do you want me to get on a plane right now? She said to me, you know, what? in two weeks, everyone will disappear. Right now, everyone is, is surrounding me, but people go back to their lives. And that's what tends to happen. And so it's going to be important for you to make plans for yourself, to reach out to friends, to let people know what you need. And sometimes you may think, oh, I just need to be alone, when in fact, you actually may need the support and the love of the people who are closest to you, who you can cry with, who you can talk with, who also have memories of your wife. I think that's really smart. Um, Absolutely. And I, I think it's really smart when you, like your friend was like, how about you wait two weeks? Because that yeah. is so true. I'm, you know, I'm. You know, I remember when my mother died. It's like, yeah, everybody's there in that first three or four days. And then it's like everyone goes home and you it know, just gets so quiet. And, yeah. And I know that's drastically different than losing a spouse of because course. losing a parent, especially as an adult, is the sad, but the order of things. Right. And so but to, to lose a spouse, especially young, is is a yeah. is much different thing. So. I had people at home when I went home, but, uh, and you know, but a widow or widower does not. So, yeah, we went for lots of walks. I showed up with at the time DVDs of sex in the city. We watched <laughs> season after season and we I took her like she had no appetite and I would take her out and like feed her. Aww. And like, you know, now many years later when she is healed and has moved on in her life, which at the time, I think she probably thought she never would. For sure. We look back on that and we have these really wonderful memories of sharing that grieving process together and kind of just going through it and, and that closeness and that bond. So I really want to encourage Karen to whatever close friends she has near her, bring them in. Like, don't do not do that. You know, a lot of the time, I know a lot okay. of the pellets have this very tight day and they're like, I'm fine. It's OK. I'll get through it. I'll just white knuckle it. Don't do that here. Like you will fuck with your your grieving process if you don't allow yourself to get that support and let it out. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And and I know that that very thing is difficult for me. So so Karen, listen to Dr. Jen and and if there's any way Tom and I can help, we will do it. <laughs> I'm also now fascinated at the idea of watching Sex in the City with Dr. Jen. Okay. <laughs> I can never watch it too much. I am happy to watch with you guys anytime. <laughs> I just feel like her take on that show would be fascinating. Yeah, yeah that's true. For sure. She's like, no, 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 that not. No, that's not what you should be doing. Or... Oh, my God. This yeah. is so destructive. Yes. Yes, but not like that. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, thank you for the great advice for Karen. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. And until next time, where can people find you? You can find me on all social media at Dr. Jen Mann, two ends on Jen, two ends on man. You can also find my Peloton workouts on my Insta story. I try to post them daily. Sometimes I lag behind, but I'm always trying. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Instructors in the news. We have another instructor making a foray into the world of authorship. We do. Yeah. Uh, so Alex Toussaint is writing a book. Well, I guess he wrote a book and it will be released right now. They're saying October 10th. And I say right now because these things shift sometimes so much as we <laughs> saw with David Miller's book. Yes. Yes, it shifted a lot. Yeah. Um, now, it's ready for pre-order now, so you can go ahead and do that. And if you do pre-order it and it releases on time, you will have it in your home, if you order through Amazon, on October 10th. So be sure and do that. Uh, this is all about um, Alex's kind of history and how he got to Peloton, but it's also kind of a motivational guide for people that are looking to up their game. So guide to greatness. 
I think you will see more and more of this. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean... Uh, They're getting paid. Yeah, and, and Toonie's book did so well. I'm sure pu- the publishing world takes notice. Of course. Jess King got married, dot, 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 <laughs> two years ago. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, she did. She got married to Sophia. They quietly got married in March of 2021. And now people had told me before that... Uh, Jess had referred to Sophia as her wife. Two things about that. One, um, that happens every once in a while when you're not wanting people to know about it. But also, <laughs> um, people, you know, they often refer to their their significant other as wife or, or husband, even if they're not officially married. If you've married. been together yeah. for a long time. Like, exactly. we were together for like two years before we finally got married, and you would call me your wife sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. I totally did that. But um, they had done the um, ceremony in March of 21, 20. 21 and this is all from just is real like uh, this is not me coming up with my own scenario right. these are facts that <laughs> she shared on instagram this is not a grand conspiracy theory <laughs> no. we did not go through their garbage no uh <laughs> and uh in the video uh just said that like they had gotten married quietly in the middle of the pandemic and they had always thought like when the pandemic is over they will have this big grand ceremony but since then having the baby having a new house that they're still working on and designing and like getting ready that they're going to be like living in um it's just not as important right now like they're they're happy they're happy with what they have and i get that i would think that you know and if they change their mind i'm not disparaging them but like i would think you're like oh we'll have a big ceremony later and then all of a sudden it's been two years and you're just like oh, that but seems will a little, we? now it seems a little weird like yeah. it's like hey you know how we've been married for for five years like we should come still. to our wedding <laughs> to me this is a great opportunity to like at a later date if they do want to do that do a, a vow renewal like right. that seems like a really good opportunity to do that and still be able to celebrate with everybody but uh knowing just she's gonna put her own spin on it and do whatever she wants because that's what she does. So. She, no, no, no. She can't put her own spin on it because Mad Dog will sue her. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Um, but yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. And, and you know, y'all can read the comments on the screen for your own uh, amusement to the people that like to argue with me. That all came from Jess. Not a word of that was my interpretation. Yeah. So congrats <laughs> to Jess and Sophia two years later. Daniel McKenna. Remember him? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I definitely do. Yeah, there was, was, it was, a, there was a, a little upheaval about him, I think. That like, was, was a fun thing. That was a fun ride. Yeah. So, uh, Daniel McKenna is doing a weekend workshop February 11th and 12th where you can work out with him live and in person in New York City. In the New York City area. Yeah. No, just to be clear, they're already sold out. Yeah. So, like, if you didn't buy it, you can't. Yes. Yeah. But uh, well, good for him. And I mean, obviously, he's got a fan base. And so that's a great way to uh, monetize it. So it will be interesting to see how many of these occur. I will be watching. Absolutely. Yeah. If anybody goes, let us know. I would love to hear your thoughts. Camilla Ramon had a post of celebrating her seventh wedding anniversary. She sure did. She's been married and calls her husband her best friend, which I just love that. <laughs> they seem like they have a lot of fun together. They do. So earlier I was saying that you could have Ash Pryor just do a strength class Mm -hmm. just to mess with people thinking they were going to get a rowing class. And she would be more than capable because (laughs) she bench pressed Adrian Williams. Now she squatted squat. Okay. You need to change the notes. I said bench Uh press. (laughs) It's funny. I do these things now, but I still still don't know. But she squatted Adrian Williams, not out squatted him, literally just picked him up. She picked him up, put him on her back and squatted him. That was amazing. I mean, Adrian is not a small man. Like, I want to be very clear about he's tall. I stood next to him and I was like, hello, like he's (laughs) tall. So... She is she is a very, very strong lady. Do not mess with Ash Pryor because she can squat you and then she'll throw you across <laughs> yes. the room if you make her mad. If she can squat you, she can throw you. Mm-hmm. Those are words to live by. Absolutely. Take note. Absolutely. But I love seeing the rowing team have so much fun together. That's awesome. Speaking of Adrian Williams, it was his birthday last week mm-hmm. and a bunch of Peloton instructors went out and celebrated. Yeah, they had a, a nice big night out. So I wanted to make sure that we shared the photos. There were lots of them from the instructors, but this one came up first. So it's the one I snagged. They win. Emma Lovewell will be part of South by Southwest. 
She sure will, alongside Katie Couric and Christy Turlington. That's not bad. Yeah, that's good company. Yeah. That's going to be March 11th, March 12th, and that's in Austin, Texas, and it's part of the She Media. Keep Austin weird. (laughs) Matt Wilpers has partnered up with Stitch Fix. Isn't this fascinating? Yeah. The lesson I have here is Stitch Fix has pants for short people <laughs> and i say that as a short person like yeah. i'm not calling out wilpers i'm no, saying but you as, and matt were like the same height yeah you? roughly and so uh um we get confused all the time right absolutely yeah, and, yeah. uh but but yeah so it's, it's hard to find pants that that fit so i'm like duly noted with <laughs> stitch fix <laughs> didn't know you could do stitch fix men so yeah yeah Can no you, i knew that was out there i know oh okay <laughs> teasing oh <laughs> um because you could have been doing that the whole time but um anyway uh that is pretty exciting for matt so congrats absolutely and speaking of stitch fix this is not a commercial for people listening on patreon we're getting paid nothing that are like we're not going to give you a promo code for us at the end nope, so nope. like this is an instructor thing don't get mad at us but <laughs> but uh but emma lovewell also partnered with stitch fix i didn't know you could do stitch fix for women <laughs> Yeah, and you know what's really surprising? It was around long before men. Yeah. They have a winter essentials, uh, and Emma is heading up the, like, she has a whole shop, and so you can go and, like, get her curated picks from her shop. Stitchfix.com slash Emma Lovewell. Notice that has nothing to do with our link. (laughs) Still not an ad. It's still not an ad. But congrats to Emma as well. I guess it kind of is. (laughs) But not for us. And that's why they partner with instructors. (laughs) Well, I mean, listen, everybody, there's a whole bunch of people that want to partner with instructors. For sure. And they will, and the instructors will continue to do that because it is revenue outside of what they make at Peloton. Oh, I don't begrudge them this at all. I know you don't, but there are people that do. And I am just pointing out again, because I just want to remind people, you know, they're only young for so long. There might be a day they don't want to do Peloton anymore. And so they got to make that cash while they can make that cash. So get in there and do it, guys. For sure. And as I say to people who are upset by things like this, grow up. We're happy for them. That's how the world works. It's like, I'm sorry that you don't like the world, but it's not going to change for you. I feel like I'm talking to the children now. (laughs) You kind of (laughs) are. Touche. So Cody Rigsby, maybe you've heard of him, was on an episode of Chicks in the Office, which is a podcast. Yep. That's all. And he was discussing Britney Spears. I'm sure because he has two settings Peloton and Britney Spears <laughs> <laughs> and apparently hating Taylor Swift <laughs> So three. <laughs> he might have dialed that back he was taking some yeah he was I have no that. idea if he did or yeah. not <laughs> speaking of Cody he was throwing some shade at people who like to uh play games to get milestone shout outs yeah he's like peloton community me- meeting and then he's like first order of business and then uh <laughs> <laughs> he says something about uh, that he's it's like he's lip syncing a quote from a movie and he's like something about even all of us today are st- even the weakest of us as he whips his head at someone else in the meeting. Members that delete rides to scam multiple milestone shout outs. Yes. Looking at you. <laughs> So I, I I thought this was great because so many people are frustrated by that. And I know that there's only so much they can do and they have so many people that that are potentially trying it. So they, it's hard to weed them out with 100 percent accuracy. Right. It is. So. And um, and just so everybody knows, and I, I feel like a lot of people will remember this. Cody has actually called people out on rides for doing that when he caught them. <laughs> like He's like, yeah, I saw you yesterday. Nice try. Yeah, like he'll he'll do that. And good. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's not fair. There's so many people God. that that would love a shout out at this point. And it's it's really hard to get one. So, yeah, you, I'm surprised they don't have some sort of system now where the people in the production room just start kind of marking people like you got one. And so like you just like when you're caller 10 at a radio station and they tell you you can't win again for 30 days. Like, I'm surprised they don't have a way to kind of. I- at the moment, they don't because yeah. you just delete the ride. So then you get another. But I would think there would be maybe a way to mark just that user overall of like you don't get another milestone shout out for 30 days regardless. It would. Yeah. I don't like know. it's no longer tied. 
like the block out period isn't tied to your milestone number but what it's I'm, tied to your account name but what i'm saying is i have no idea how you do that when you have all these like so then that means somebody has to manually track every single freaking shout out and they literally do 50 in a ride yeah. so like how that just seems impossible i don't know yeah if anyone in the production team is listening they're like shut up yeah for real like tom that's like a <laughs> lot of extra work for somebody and also it's what interns are for you don't even know how half of them are spelled because the instructor is pronouncing them to the best of their ability but like they're all cut up now because it's right. not like cody one two three it's like cody N. D L. It could be like Cody loves chocolate, and some of people are spelling L O V E S. Some people L U V S. Mm-hmm. Some, yeah, for sure. Yeah. A bunch of instructors uh, went out on a town and caught a showing of Aladdin on Broadway. They sure did, and uh, Aditi posted about this. But yeah, it was a ton of the instructors. Yeah, went out. they said it was uh, instructor instructor Broadway night, which I love. It's interesting that of all the plays on Broadway, they picked Aladdin. Well, it looks to me like somebody um, from the Disney on Broadway team gifted this Uh, to the instructors because it says thank you to that person and the whole team for making this happen. So that's just my interpretation. Okay, that makes a little more sense. Not that there's anything wrong with Aladdin. We've seen Aladdin. No, yeah, it's a great show. Yeah, I just, you know, as long it's kind of a perennial show on Broadway. So I kind of figured if you wanted to see it and you lived in New York. You probably have by now. It's been running for like a decade. So, yeah, I have a feeling there's um, probably something here with all the people that the instructors know on Broadway. And yeah. also not to mention that the Disney tie in because Peloton has done a lot with Disney in the last few years. So that is true. Uh, I don't know where the connection came from, but I'm just guessing it was it was a connection of some kind that made that happen. Eric Yeager had an Instagram post this week celebrating his third year at Peloton. Yeah, he celebrated his premiere ride on one fourteen of 2020, just before the insanity of the yeah. pandemic. Look at all those pictures with everybody together. Yeah. <laughs> like Everyone was sitting next to each other. You're a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do that? No, we can do it again, so it's yeah. okay. Yeah, we're back now. Yes. Uh, but anyway, uh, super cool. Uh, it's cool to see that he's, he's here three years later. It's yeah. hard to believe. I swear the pandemic really stole some time because I still feel like that was just yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it really does feel that way. So Benny Adami was celebrating... <laughs> bring your bestie to work day sort of so um i think that benny just has a great sense of humor and he decided to bring an autographed picture of I- i'm gonna butcher this woman's name i have no idea who she is um but she is a german actress that much i know and tom doesn't even have her name up on the screen anymore so i Sorry. can't even see it um uh, fraka ludwig I don't know. Yeah, so we apologize. <laughs> yeah, I really don't want to butcher somebody's German. name. <laughs> um, but the the thing is, it's hilarious. He took an autographed picture to the studio and did a reel of spending the entire day with her. And he talks about how they had coffee and some great like like break time and they had coffee <laughs> and this really deep conversation. And then all of the other instructors posted like pay, like posed for pictures with her. So it's like a and flat Stanley kind of a thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I just thought it was so creative and so fun. And even though I, I am not familiar with this actress, I know that she's a big deal in Germany and yeah. I wanted to share it with everybody because it's hilarious. So there you go. Coming up after this, you get a peek behind the Met Pro scenes as Angelo does a session update with myself and Crystal. So stick around. Joining us today via the magic of ZoomTube from Met Pro, it's Angelo here to answer all of your fitness and nutrition questions, except this week, he's not going to do that. Nope, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not doing so, that this week. Well, we, we kind of are. Week, huh? Well, we have a New Year's resolution here on the clip out, and it's uh, we're going to try to lie to people more. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's we're going to put Angelo on the spot. So, so Angelo, we were thinking that since we already had you on the phone, maybe we could just do our coaching session now. How does that sound? Let's, let's do it. Yeah, I thought this I'm, could be good insight for people if they're wondering like what it's like when you're interacting with your coach. Yeah. This is this the sort of like one-on-one 
stuff. Uncut, unfiltered. Yes. To our brave souls. Yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> okay, so full transparency for those listening. The last couple weeks, it has been a little... A little scary with the food because we've been out of town. It was the holidays rolling in and out. We were actually really good through Christmas. We were. We were. Yeah. And then uh, and then we went into New Year's. We were pretty good. That We've had some like ups and downs because like we went out of town to go visit my parents and we had Christmas with them, but it was just before New Year's. And then we got back to right where we had been. And then we had to go to Norwalk, you know kids had to go do a college visit uh and and then every time yeah yeah and then we did a peloton meetup at this place called uh o'neill's in norwalk and uh yeah i was really good the first night we ate there but the second (laughs) night we ate there mm -mm, i was not good it was like it was good but we were not correct yes correct (laughs) so having said all of that i am up about like we were i was i was where i was just before christmas um i'm up like I'm above 160 at this point. Just so okay. I'm just putting it out there. People can judge me, whatever. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> you guys are doing just fine. You guys are doing just fine. No, I, I did review uh, your numbers this morning. Not because I, uh, not in preparation for this. I didn't know we were going to do this. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I am prepared. So uh, I will comment on this for, you know, at least for, for the listeners. It, it's actually, believe it or not, really common to make it through the uh, occasion, the vacation, the holiday, the weekend, fairly unscathed, and then the week after actually run into trouble. Mm. Uh, And now this is what happened to you guys. You guys ended up just chaining trips back to back. So, you know, life happens. But for a lot of people, what happens is twofold. One, mentally and emotionally, they've been kind of hanging on to behave at least hold their ground through a travel or vacation or holiday or whatever, and then get back, we kind of let our hair down come Monday for a day. We're not thinking about it like, oh, I'm on the other side. And then you're catching up on all your to do's. You're busy. And oh, by the way, because you've been out of town or you've been eating out or you've been at the family's house, your fridge is bare. (laughs) So you don't have your food prepped. You don't have your, so what'll often happen is I'll get the, I made it through the weekend. And then on Monday and Tuesday is like, yeah, I ran out of food. So I ended up getting something on the go two days back to back. And that's where you run into troubles. For you guys, Crystal, you said you're what, you're just over 160. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So you're just up a few pounds, by the way, that's normal. It happens this time of year, vacation. Um, I know what phase you're on and where your intake is at. And so basically what we're going to do right now is we're not going to change your meal plan because you're going to drop about half of the weight that you regained simply getting back on track. I know you've kept your, your running, your Peloton, your car, everything that you've been doing, your tonal all intact. So we're going to just reintegrate with you at the same intake level. Now, in your case, it's going to be different from Tom's. Knowing your metabolism quite well at this point, <laughs> you're going to drop back down probably 60% of what you popped up. Then we're going to have to push the last little bit back off. And so what we will do is probably a really brief cut. And in, because I know you have that run coming, up, run coming up in a few weeks, we'll probably execute what we call a zigzag versus an actual down adjust cycle. A down adjust cycle would be a few weeks. We'll probably end up just executing something for a few days because it'll be adequate for you to get you back to your low. And then we're just gonna hold you there as we gradually actually go into a performance cycle leading up to your events and then so about five weeks out we'll have you at your highest intake and then we're going to go into another cut okay okay yeah so it's about 15 weeks out no so we've got just to to give you that heads up because i know you have a lot oh it's 15 see i was thinking five okay so we will probably have time to actually do another cutting cycle if need be okay okay Cool. So we'll cool. see how how low we get with you just getting right back on track. Meal timing is going to be critical. Always air for earlier in the day. If you're like, well, I could either have my snack a little earlier or a little later. Go earlier. Make sure you're getting adequate hydration. You know the drill. Within about 72 hours, you're going to drop right back down. If you don't get all the way, we'll instigate 
a zigzag and then we'll decide probably end of the next seven to ten days if we want to actually go into a cutting cycle or just do a slower ramp up but we'll reserve that decision to watch your numbers over the next few days okay perfect thank you for tom uh -oh. uh, it's just going to be a little bit different because we were already a little higher intake so you're not going to have to do it. you're just going to go into a cutting phase okay but the meal plan you're on now will be enough to do that even at your higher intake because i know where your metabolism is so we're just going to ride this out ironically until you stop losing weight so knowing where your numbers are i'm estimating that you're going to lose four pounds probably a couple pounds real fast and then you'll probably bounce up and down for a couple days and then drop another couple then you'll level off okay and then you won't drop farther because again we know where your numbers are and your intake is until we then in your case we are going to manipulate some carbohydrates and so i would estimate that that next cut if we're behaving and if you're clean probably a week to 10 days out is when we'll probably need to hit that does that make sense to you sure that, that makes sense i feel like i should say my weight because crystal said hers i, know, I feel right? like <laughs> I feel like everyone's waiting, like no pun intended. <laughs> no. Like, wait, the woman <laughs> said her weight, which they're normally much more guarded about it. And 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 it was, it was, I am like I am like okay. If I get one nasty message, I'm blocking you. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Crystal. So I was like 183 this morning, 183 and a half for those of you keeping score at home. And I don't care if people know or not. I uh, uh but I just felt like in in an act of solidarity. Oh. Aw, thanks, I babe. should say my weight as well <laughs> and that's and that's a, a really a good spot honestly all things considered coming off of the holidays yeah, coming I off was... of travel uh we know how your body's gonna respond you're gonna drop right back down and and gasp guess what this is completely normal for everyone listening this is completely normal um and I tell this story frequently, especially when people have a larger weight loss goal. Mm. So when somebody has, you know, 70, 100 pounds plus that they want to take off, uh, I have worked with uh, a multitude of individuals who have lost over 60, 70 pounds, a handful that have lost over 100 because there's only, you know, there's not as many people out there saying, hey, I legit have a hundred right. honest to drop in every single case where that type of that type of weight has been dropped there has always been at least one season where some weight was gained back in the process and i have been doing this 20 years i have never seen it where someone is oh i lost you know eight pounds the first month and then it was five pounds a month and i did that straight for 13 months and then i was at my goal weight it never works that way because you we are human beings living a real human life and life doesn't hand it to you that way Amen yeah. to that. Well, and it's, it's like you always say and i think sometimes people think that this is just about lose 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 and yeah. it's and but you always say like you're still supposed to enjoy yourself and food is part of enjoying yourself and that's okay and so i think coming off the holidays like i i went up like five pounds like i don't feel bad about that at I all mean, we tom and i kind of think of it like we compare it to like where we did last year at yeah. this time of the year and like i feel like our a big thing that has shifted for us is like we're much better at getting back into things like there would be time periods where last year where we were just like ah, for three weeks at a time right. whatever it was like requiem for a dream but <laughs> yeah. instead of heroin it was food <laughs> And this year, I feel like it, it was like there would be a couple days of that and we'd get back in. And like, I know that for people listening, that may not sound like a huge shift, but mentally, that's huge sure, for yeah. us. That's a really huge. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. And metabolically, here's the truth. That is just, you know, it's unfortunately, this isn't presented as candidly and, you know, in literature and the media and the news as it really needs to be how the metabolism actually works. So before you guys went into this season, long before we knew we were going to acclimate your condition, your metabolism up. And yes, you can condition your metabolism up. 
all of the research shows that the biggest, the greatest indicator of metabolic pace is actually going to be your total overall intake. So the mistake people make is knowing that something's coming around the corner where they're not going to necessarily be on um, a stricter protocol or watching what they eat. They'll go into it dieting harder or cutting harder. And then the body biologically, this isn't just some, you know, some meme on on Instagram, <laughs> biologically, your body is now in a state where it wants to actually superimpose glycogen stores into your muscles and hold extra sugar. So what will happen is that's where you gain that real rapid rate weight. So weight loss and even a preferred reference is body composition shifts is a combination of knowing when to sprint and push for a cutting cycle and when to focus on winning not just the battle but the war by speeding up your metabolism and now here's a painful truth you don't get to do both at the same time if even in a perfectly executed scenario if you are in a state of weight loss your metabolic rate is slowing down and i know that is just crushing to, <laughs> to consider but it is the truth we can manage that because when we go through these cycles and we prepare your body by speeding it back up giving your metabolism a reprieve from aggressive cutting your metabolic rate will rebound right back up right back up it's the same mechanic we always think of that stubborn effect of, well, when I, I cut and I lose weight, but then I plateau. Well, it switches. When you eat more, you gain some weight, but you don't just keep gaining and gaining. Your metabolic rate rises. So when we harness that and we plan for that, that's how we get the really the great long-term results beyond even just the short-term cutting cycles. All very good information. Absolutely. So if people would like a session like this for themselves for their own fitness goals where can they find you reach out to me i'd love to visit we'd love to visit with you at metpro.co slash tco wonderful thank you thanks guys peloton artist collaborations the latest artist series features Kygo? Kygo. Kygo. Yes, it's Kygo. K-Y-G-O. He's either uh, <laughs> an artist I've never heard of or he's a radio station west of the Mississippi. He is an artist you've never heard of. Okay. Uh, we are not the demo, but a lot of people are very excited about this. It's it's like tropical house music. So um, if you know, you know, and you're going to okay. love it if you know. If you don't, just try it. You might like it. Tropical house music. Mm-hmm. I am moderately intrigued. Well, if you are moderately intrigued, you should take a class with Ben Aldis or Shalati. I'm uh, sure there are other ways for me to hear Kygo. <laughs> <laughs> Marcel, uh, you could take a class with Eric Yeager. You could take a class with Jocelyn Thompson Rule, Didi, Aditi, or Adrian Williams. Okay. All kinds of options. Duly noted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're welcome. Peloton Celebrity Sightings. We had a celebrity sighting in studio, and it wasn't part of a giant promotion like when Usher or Lizzo showed up. Yeah. They're just there using the bike like you and me. Yeah. And uh, it just happened to be, you know, no big deal, Joey McIntyre from New Kids on the Block. Now, I have to say, I am not a boy band fan, This, but this still would have been pretty cool to see, you know? That's cool that like he just signed up. Do you think he just I, signed up or do you think someone got him in? I don't know. I think he just signed up. And here's my here's why I say that. He'd have a better bike. <laughs> I don't know. He's in the front row. But he's like not in the bike that's super easy to see. Like he's it's really dark on him. He may not have wanted it. Maybe. Um I, I I don't know how it went down. I kinda tend to agree with you to be honest because it says that he was celebrating and he happened to have some performances in Carnegie Hall. Right. Uh, so he just kind of stopped by and did celebrate his 50th birthday. So can we just can we just pause for a moment? <laughs> New Kids on the Block is 50 and he was the young one of the group. How did that happen? I didn't realize they were the same age as me. I mean, I remember like when I was in college playing them at parties and stuff, but but uh, I yeah. didn't realize that we were. 
were basically the same age. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Well, uh, he took one of Robin's classes. It was her pop punk ride. And uh, if you missed it, you can still take it. And uh, another reason I do not think that this was all staged in any way, shape or form. There were no new kids on the block songs played, I... which tells me Peloton does not have a deal with them in place. They do not have the <laughs> licensing agreement. Yeah. In all seriousness, people yeah. were complaining about this. So I feel like it needs to be addressed. I mean, and, hey, he's taking a class. He probably doesn't want to hear one of his own songs. Right. Like I remember when I would talk to peter torque like there were times we were having conversations he couldn't remember which albums which songs were on he would literally do a radio interview and turn to me and be like which album was that song on?" and i would tell him and he was like i didn't listen to him he's like we would go in a studio we would record a bunch of songs and then they assemble and then they decide which ones make the records and he's like i didn't I didn't listen to the records. He's like, 1967? I'm not listening to Headquarters. I'm listening to Sgt. Pepper's and Pet Sounds. So I love the honesty. Yeah. The great late Peter Tork. Yes. Well, I can understand. I mean, it's not at all the same, but I don't really listen to these episodes. No. <laughs> I'm barely listening now. I know. I'm very well aware. <laughs> Past guest update. Past guest updates. Uh, Andrea Barber lost her shit. <laughs> yes, she when did. When the last thing we just talked about happened. Yeah, she was so excited. Now, you have to remember, she is a huge New Kids on the Block fan. So they are her monkeys. They are. And uh, she interacts with them on Twitter all the time. She was so excited. Like, whatever she saw, they were in studio. She said she screamed and that there were, like, the screaming face emojis. And she sent me three of them. She was so excited. I love it so much. <laughs> And we have other past guest updates. We do. I didn't use that sweeper just to make that joke. Although I would have. I, I, it is, is, you're not above it. it is, I am not above it. I know. I am. <laughs> the plugs aren't the only thing around here that are shameless. <laughs> I am also shameless. But past guest Anya Adams, episode 282. Yes. I believe it was. Yes. Uh, she is a director. She directed lots of episodes of what was it? Blackish and and lots of other things. Oh, that, so many things. So, so many things. But she talked about she was working on a project for Disney called Prom Pact. And she was at the TCA, the, the Television Critics Association, where they kind of unveil a, all the new shows. So if you've been seeing lots of stories about new TV shows like the new Night Court, stuff like that. That's why, because this event's going on, and she was there promoting Prom Pack. Congratulations to Anya. Yeah, and that's going to be on Disney Plus if you want to keep an eye out for that. I do, because uh, just hearing about it made me, like, whatever she was talking about it, I definitely wanted to watch it. <laughs> also, past guest Mindy Shire from Runway of Dreams, uh, episode 290. She uh, was at the National Retail Federation's big show, or she's... She, w she, she was. She was. It already happened. Yes. Okay, yeah. Yes. And she was a speaker there. Yeah. Now, and I just want to say the reason this is a big deal is because uh, her mission is to, um, you know, bring people up to speed with the adaptive category. So being able to be at the retail's big show and talk to people about how important that is, about how important inclusivity is, that's a huge deal. So I'm so glad that she was able to do that. And Mindy was just a delight to have on the show. She was. In case you missed it. There's going to be a virtual rowing event for people. Yes, I'm super excited. January 31st, uh, it's going to be like a meet your row instructors virtual event. And uh, then you're going to kind of kick off the year with motivation. You can submit questions ahead of time and you can register to get a reminder about the event. Now, the part that I'm most excited about is the fact that in my mind, no one has to tell me this. This is just how this works. This means we're close. This means the live classes are almost oh. <laughs> here. That's what that means. They would not be doing this if it didn't mean that. That's This is all just a lead up. So Ash Pryor is going to be there. Alex Karwaski and uh, Katie Wang. And she will be squatting all three of them. <laughs> and, and and it's actually Katie Wong. And then Adrian Williams is going to do a host. Like he's the host of the event. So I did submit a question. I can't wait to see if it gets asked. And uh, I am excited to attend this event. 
We also have some beginning yoga classes happening for people. Well, it's not just a class. This is a program. Oh, sorry. Uh, and the reason it's so exciting is it's a German program. So ah. it's the first beginner yoga program that's going to be entirely in German. And so if you haven't had a chance to take classes with Nico, this is a great opportunity to and do if, so. If there's anything that I think helps bring people peace <laughs> internally, it's the German spoken <laughs> word. Well, yoga will bring... <laughs> bring the tone down but i guess if you're german it doesn't sound like that no to you. i'm sure we but sound like that probably to germans <laughs> but we all sound like cowboys to them yeah whenever it's like it's funny like whenever you see on on tv on like english tv shows someone doing an american accent it's almost always like a country accent yeah it cracks me they, up. it's not like they go to they don't they, their go-to is not like the northeast right or, the or a South. midwest <laughs> kind of nondescript accent like it's yeah it was funny just a side note uh when we landed in boston a couple of weeks ago i asked somebody at the airport for like just directions to get to the car place and the guy started talking with a boston accent i was like oh yeah oh yeah we're in boston we're in boston because <laughs> we weren't even in our minds it was like we were in boston for 10 minutes we're getting a car and we're driving to connecticut and so it was like all of a sudden like somebody starts talking and boston falls out of, and you're just like oh yeah yeah, yeah. we are in boston in, in my head we weren't but my body is definitely in boston it was hilarious as is this man's mouth <laughs> and yes. he was super nice by very the way. nice yeah. gave very good directions he too. did <laughs> There's also a We Don't Quit challenge coming up, which I am taking part in. I quit. I did it. <laughs> we don't quit oh. is how that works. Well, that to me is a challenge, right? Like, oh, you're telling me I can't do that? I can absolutely do that. Well, that's why no one has you join challenges <laughs> on Peloton. But like, you know the whole saying behind, like, you know that January 12th is called Quitter's Day, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So this challenge is like the polar opposite of that, right? Ah. Like you keep going for the week after it. So you have to work out at least uh, seven plus days between January 16th and the 23rd and boom, you get your badge. So just make sure you do that because you're already going to be working out that time anyway. Get your blue dot. You're all set. Peloton birthdays. And we have two birthdays this week. Ben Aldis, who is celebrating a birthday on January 22nd. And Logan Aldridge, who's celebrating a birthday on January 25th. Happy birthday, Ben and Logan. That's so fun. And coming up after this, we're going to talk to KB Waters all about 22 consecutive days of 50K runs. Yeah. Insane. And, and Kirsten also goes by KB on some of her socials. So you can call Kirsten either. So at one point we called her Kirsten and another point we're calling her KB. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us today via the magic of ZoomTube is Kirsten Beverly Waters. Hey, Kirsten, how's it going? Hello. Oh, it's going great. So glad to be here. <laughs> Are you, though? Yeah. After what we just put you through? <laughs> I'm not sure I believe you. <laughs> we just oh, put her else? through the paces of uh, oh. our electronic issues. Yes. So she was very patient. Very. So she gets snippy at the end. Don't judge her. Judge us. <laughs> I was the one getting snippy. I was like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> it happens. Technology with all of us, it gets the best of us. Right. Until it's not great. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Kirsten, before we kind of find out some more about you, I'd like to start with Peloton and how you originally found Peloton. And like, when was that in the whole scheme of, of the timeline of your life? Many moons ago in the long, no. <laughs> about three and a half years ago, I, it actually started with me looking for a bike for my wife. My wife really enjoyed spin classes, but in the gym that we were at, people love to go quote unquote, sweat out their sickness. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, <laughs> By the way, that's that's not how things work, but that's okay. That's another yeah. podcast on another day. Um, and so anytime we would go to spin classes, honestly, we would end up sick. And so I was like, we need to find something to like bring this studio into our home so we can stay healthier. And this was pre-COVID. So, you know, that wasn't even on the radar of things that we were concerned You're about. You're a trendsetter. <laughs> exactly. We're like, yeah. let's go pre. And then like, we got it. And then everybody's like, I should get a bike. I'm like, you should now. Uh, <laughs> but she was the one, she was actually more into spin than I was. Um, 
I thought that I really didn't like spinning. And it turns out I just don't like bad instructors. So that's why <laughs> it never really clicked for me before. Yeah. And so when I was doing some research um, around Peloton, I researched some of the instructors and I liked the personalities, the variety of music, the variety of classes. And so it seemed like the best option. So that's how we initially started down the road of Peloton was searching for a bike for my wife. And then in the process, I got sucked into it and was like, okay, I, I can get into this. I enjoy this. So okay. Do you now fight for control of the bike? No. Um, you know, <laughs> my wife still likes like shorter classes. She enjoys lane break. Like um, she likes to game. So she likes the game aspect of it. And Whoa. for me, like, what kind of weirdo likes lane break? Me? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have not done lane break. Uh, it feels like very like dance dance revolution for, it, like, for me, which I think is awesome. I think that anytime you can reach a larger audience to get them moving, it's wonderful. So I think that Peloton tapped into something in a different demographic of people and also just to like change things up. But I, as an endurance person, am drawn to a lot of like the longer rides. So I end up in a lot of like the power zone rides. So I spend more time on the bike than she does, but uh, she also really loves the yoga classes and strength classes and the variety of options on the platform. So the bike has not been a fight yet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> there's always, there's always 2023. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you say that so excitedly. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, I'm edging for it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it would certainly make things interesting. Yes. Well, and I was curious because um, you, you, you're a coach, a yoga teacher, a trail runner. Like you said, you're an endurance person. So I was kind of surprised that you enjoy the bike as much as you seem to, because it, it's it tends to be like if you're you have sports that you really love, and I would have thought you would have come to spinning before that. So I was really curious how you got into that. Um, whenever you. <laughs> Do you like being a coach, designing your own classes? What is that like taking other people's classes? A relief. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, that's really part of what has, has kept me with Peloton is I spend hours a day coaching people one-on-one, -on -one, writing individualized programs for athletes all over the world. Um, and I really refer to everyone as an athlete, anyone who has a plan, who has an intention to, to move their body with fitness is an athlete for me. Um, so some people are coming because they, they want to lose weight. Others want to run a 5k. Some want to be Olympic rowers or um, competitive cyclists. So there's a whole world out there, but I am always deeply seeped in so much research around exercise physiology and everything that's coming out and always challenging myself and my athletes that when it comes time for my own stuff at moments, I'm like, literally whatever you put in front of me, I will do. Just don't ask me to come up with it myself. <laughs> I get um, that. So, so Peloton works really well because there's, there's so much variety to what I can uh, get into. And I know enough about my body and I've done training and coaching long enough that I can really manipulate the platform to fit my needs. So that's helpful. That's, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, you're kind of like a chef stopping at my McDonald's on your way home. <laughs> I don't I don't think Peloton would like to be compared to McDonald's. I know. I, was like, I don't think you're gonna enjoy that comparison, but I get what you're saying. It's it's easy to it's a grab and go. Like what you need. <laughs> okay, so I have to ask about this amazing thing you did in June of 2022. Uh, it sounds like you've done a lot of amazing things. This is one of them. Uh, you decided to break the world record for the most consecutive days of doing a 50K a day. First of all, how many miles is a 50K? Yes, translate that into American, please. Yeah, so for, for our American listeners, that's around 31.1 miles a day. A day. Yeah, a day. So more okay. than a marathon. Yeah. Yeah. So what made you decide that you, this was the thing you wanted to do? So in 2020, I had got pretty burnt out in coaching um, because everything got shut down and all of my stuff went digital. Um, 
I had a lot more athletes that I was coaching and people who were reaching out to me, but because people couldn't access therapists and friends and family, I started like those things became amplified as a coach. As a coach, I always hear those things and they're a part of coaching, but it was very heavy and dark all the time with my athletes. And I was struggling because now I'm just like being dumped on. And so I wanted to take a step away from coaching for a month just to kind of reset myself. And so I told my wife that I was just going to put on my hydration pack full of snacks. And I would call her when I got to a location that I was done walking or running or whatever. And I would leave (laughs) the house and go out. And so the first day that I did it, I was, you know, 50 kilometers away from home. And I'm like, I don't want to walk back. (laughs) (laughs) That's fair. (laughs) Um, And so then I got kind of curious about like just continuing to go out there, connect with nature, connect with myself. Um, I listened to a lot of the outdoor Peloton uh, runs and walks. Like if I felt like I needed someone to converse with in my mind. And then I had come across an article about the suicide rates with LGBTQ youth due to COVID hitting harder than any other community. And I have coached many youth in LGBTQ communities as well as have athletes and adult athletes who are LGBTQ plus And I've watched too many um, contemplate quite seriously suicide. And I have also seen the ramifications of not having a space to call for help or to be safe. And when we think about COVID and we think about everybody being home and while families are joking about like, oh, I can't stand my kids anymore, people forget that not every parent is accepting of an LGBTQ youth. And now those kids school may have been a safe place. There might've been a teacher or a coach or a group of friends that were safe and now they're not. And now they are just bombarded. Um, And so the Trevor project uh, does extensive research around LGBTQ youth suicide, uh, help prevention legislation. And if you look at some of their statistics, the statistic is that every 45 seconds, a youth between the age of 13 and 24 in the LGBTQ community will either seriously consider or attempt suicide. In 2021, their statistics showed that nearly 720,000 U.S. youth between those ages attempted suicide. We're talking almost a million children in this country alone. And so I set my watch one day to beep every 45 seconds when I went out for my run to remember that there is a youth that was thinking that there's no one out there, there's no one to help. And I made it about an hour before I fell to my knees just in tears, um, thinking about my own struggles with depression, with suicide growing up. um, And I wanted to do something. And I knew that to do something would require a radical event to draw attention, to raise enough money because people are like, oh, we'll go run a 50K in honor of it. I'm like, but 150K isn't going to be enough. Um, And I want people to to talk about this and to have a conversation. And so that sort of led to me contacting a friend of mine who is a fellow coach. And I was like, am I out of my mind to think (laughs) I should go for a world record? (laughs) And she's like, for anyone else, I would say yes, but for you, no, just seems like another day of like, what's the craziest (laughs) thing I can do. And so it started with, I would go for the, I was like, I could go for the women's record, which at the time was 11 days. Um, But I identify as non-binary. And my concern was that people would contest that I was quote, stealing a women's record. And so I said, well, if I take both records, you can't contest it. (laughs) And so... (laughs) So the men's record was 22 days. So I said, okay, I'll, you know, 21 days, I'll go for 22 then. And, um, what a badass. Yeah. <laughs> like, why not? Let's just go for it. And so that's what started the process and thinking about mental health for LGBTQ youth definitely carried me through some adversity in that challenge. Um, something I didn't foresee is like, I had to wear a GoPro every single day. And you can't stop the footage. So I had to have an external battery pack that was quite heavy. So between that and my pack, I was carrying 25 to 30 pounds on me every day running. And the GoPro rubbed my chest completely raw within the first three days. And so I couldn't like just having it there or getting in the shower was painful and it was causing swelling. So my diaphragm would swell up. 
And then I couldn't get any food down. So like the first three days, I couldn't get much in other than water and like salt tabs. And I was. So did you just acclimate or did you find a solution? Um, I definitely began to acclimate. And I think the acc- like how I acclimated was telling my body, this isn't going to stop. We're going. So <laughs> I will win this. Yeah. Let's find some answers. <laughs> um, we definitely like my wife became the master of crewing to help figure out how we could tape and adjust and um, tegaderm, which they use like post-surgery to like keep, keep wounds from uh, getting infected. We started using that and taping it down underneath the shirt and putting it over so that it wouldn't slide and move as much, but with the heat. And then I had several days that were just like monsoons, the water would just seep and rub and you just stop, like you stop feeling that. Um, and you, you shift, you pivot, you find new ways. And eventually then I was able to get food down and I got faster as the the weeks progressed. So then some people said they were going to come out and run with me. We're like, I kind of thought you'd be broken and you're going faster. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's amazing what happens when you can actually fuel yourself. Like that's such a huge part. Like now I can get food in my body. Although the, like the little plastic popsicles. I'm not going to like throw a name brand out here because there's no sponsorship. Although I will be the first sponsored popsicle. (laughs) Um, Like that and frozen oranges became like my go-to on things that I could get in as like quick sugar and and things like that. And then a couple local pizza places started to become my favorite place. You just run to the pizza place and eat. I I guess when you're you're burning that many calories, you might as well enjoy it enjoy you know right like you know what the best part was is my garmin watch would tell me every day because i was keeping like a steady pace it was taking me around six hours a day to do it by the end it was closer to five and a half hours and every day my watch would be like this was a great recovery run you're ready for tomorrow i'm like recovery run like screw you garmin (laughs) it's like you didn't try hard enough we know you can do more (laughs) that's cute (laughs) i'm like ouch great Garmin sounds like my parents. <laughs> <laughs> Garmin is I well then then after June ever every month since it's like are you still running? It seems like you dropped off. <laughs> how many miles you go after that? It seems like you're like and then I was laughing because I also kept the Peloton app running like the just run. And so then Peloton the next month is like here's your month recap. Wah, wah. <laughs> I was like well crap. <laughs> I love, my favorite parts of ours is how your friends were like oh we'll run with you but like deeper into it when we think you'll be slowing down <laughs> exactly, exactly that's where my true friends like actually you know I will say this one of the best things was Peloton helped connect me with a lot of people in the community who came out and traveled from other states to run or cycle alongside me so Quite a few of the You Get To crew for Jess Sims group came out and quite a few of Christine's I Am, I Can, I Will, I Do group came out as well and supported me. And so for that, I am so grateful that here's the Peloton community showing up and like, I'm going to drive from Connecticut. I'm going to drive from New York. I'm going to drive from Massachusetts to come up to Maine and come alongside you and do whatever I can. So I was really grateful for that. That is awesome. That is, yeah. So at the risk of sounding like your Garmin. Um, (laughs) Did you get to 23 and you're like, I'm done? Or did you go a little further to try and add a a little extra padding to make it harder for the next person? Um, I did finish with the, with the 22 days and then went out for a run the next day. That wasn't a 50 K and continued running. Um, And I had a lot of people who said, well, if you're still out there running, why aren't you still doing more of the 50 Ks? And the point wasn't the record. I don't, I don't need a record to be a better person. I I don't need the record. The record was to gain coverage, to to get enough people having a conversation around it. And I certainly had received a lot of death threats in my DMS when things started popping up in like women's running magazine, did an article, local news station. Well, because people then say that I'm perverse or that like those youth deserve to. Uh, So, I mean, there are a lot of conversations, but here's the thing is I actually welcome those conversations. I welcome those threats because 
I want to know where they came from. I want to know why they have come to that conclusion. And the reality is that because I didn't engage with yelling at them back or trying to prove a point to them, I, I offered an invitation. I said, come out, run with me. Tell me why you believe this. Tell me why you feel this way. And there were some who took me up on that offer on and had conversations and some that walked away saying, wow, I really got this wrong. And others who also said, I still disagree, but I also realize I could still be a decent human being to other people. Um, and I think that that's always important. I, I always challenge people. Like I always want people to feel like there's a seat at the table to have a conversation. I don't care where you come from or how you view me. I'm willing to listen. And that was part of the journey. So I didn't okay. feel like I needed to keep going to prove anything to anyone else. Right. I have to ask how you have the patience yeah. <laughs> and the energy to do that because I I'm understanding the patience with us not having our audio working. That's true. This. That's like, true. This puts that in a whole new life. That She's puts like, it in a whole new life. Like, yeah, like <laughs> that was like a one K. That was <laughs> <laughs> that was a cute sprint. It was nice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 800 meters. Right. Um, well, but I don't, I don't understand how you have patience for those people or how you can welcome those conversations. I think you're amazing for doing that. So I don't say that as a criticism. Yeah. Please. We're not please trying to understand. talk you out of being no, a decent, better it, human being than we are. It, but, <laughs> <laughs> but like, it is so energy sucking to read those messages day after day and i'm talking about the messages i get i'm not trying to do some big amazing thing like change the world like you're doing like you're trying to you're trying to have real conversations with people that are really important and i just i see what i see every day and it's it's just it's soul sucking it just is soul sucking i don't know how you do it how did you do that well it's not that it's not hard but i also know how hard it was for me to have conversations with people about who I am. Um, like when I first came out and people unwilling to listen to me. And if I do the same to somebody else, I'm not any better. Um, and I think that one thing that saddens me a bit in our current climate of culture is it's like, if I disagree with you, I'm going to blast you on social media. I'm going to try and destroy your life. I don't desire that for anyone. I, I, I think I like to believe that deep down we are all good people, but we've been educated and raised in different ways. Like hate is not something you're born with. It's something you learn. And it's really hard to hate someone when you have a conversation and you realize you have more in common. And that's part of what I like, part of the conversations I try to have with people is like, okay, fine. This one aspect of my life you disagree with, but I noticed that you enjoy running. Like what took you to running? And when you start down that path, it becomes harder and harder for people to build that wall of hate. And they're like, even if it's one brick less, right? Like they take yeah. one down on the wall. If we could extend more of that, I think we could see more kindness um, as a whole in the community. And that's what I enjoy about, um, coaching, right? Like I invite people, I, I have athletes who, when we first met, it was because of some of those DMS. And I'm like, now I coach them and people are like, how could you coach someone who has such a different view of you? I'm like, because the world is full of people with different views. And if I turn everyone away with a different view, I don't want to surround myself with everybody who has the same belief and same system, like same thought as me, which, you know, not to be super cheesy to tie it in, but isn't that what Peloton does, right? Like with all the different instructors, there are people you can go on the main page who have polarizing views of every instructor <laughs> and have no problem sharing these polarizing views, forgetting that there's a human on the other side of that screen who sees those things. And same way we were talking about it, like it's soul sucking and crushing. I know from personal experience and knowing several different instructors that it is hard on them. And it is hard to be like, okay, well, great. Like I'm not for everyone. And you'll hear their sort of like tongue in cheek in classes. Like, oh, you don't like my music? Like go to this person. You don't like my personality? Go to this person. That's, that's the beauty of having a, a diverse eclectic culture a, as a whole in the world is that you can learn new things. If we listen, <laughs> that's a big if. That's a big if. <laughs> yes. You are, you are very hopeful for human yeah. mankind. And I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, or I could just go down the torpedo of crap and it doesn't seem like that's any more fun. Either. No, no, it's not. You're right. You're right. It's just, I, I can't imagine. 
it, it's just I know the DMs that I get, and sometimes people are just like you said, they forget there's a human being on the other end of it. And then when you're talking about something that is sadly controversial, it's it's it, and I say sadly because it shouldn't be controversial in my mind. Um, it's it's just seems like it would take a so much energy to try to explain it over and over and over again to people. Um, and so I'm just amazed by your ability to be able to do that. I think one of the things I've learned, I mean, I, in college, I studied um, comparative religions. So I've studied religions and philosophies all over the world. And I had a college professor who would require us to go to different religious services that were outside of our norm to really push our boundaries. And if there's nothing else that I've learned through those teachings, through those readings and, and my continued education, and it is those words that they're projecting is their hurt and their pain. And what they're really saying is nobody is listening to me and I feel unseen. And that's one of the things I've tried to do as, as a coach, as a person is I always want people to feel seen, whatever that means. Um, and so when I read those messages through the lens of what is this person actually asking for? A lot of times it's, they just want someone to hear where they've come from and how they came to this space and nobody is. So they're trying to shout to whoever is in their, in their, like right in front of them. Um, and sometimes that's me. Sometimes that's you. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, the Peloton instructors or, or whoever that we see in, in social media. And so if I can look through that, which I can't always, sometimes it requires a raging run or ride. <laughs> <laughs> you are human. I, work through it. I will work through it. <laughs> I just need to get a fuel on a 50 K. It's like, bye, bye, bye. Here I come. <laughs> <laughs> and then some people, when they have disagreeing opinions with me and they want to yell at me, I just pick up the pace. And then it's a lot harder for them to keep shouting those mean things. <laughs> It's hard to project a new type of muscles. training. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Rage training. It's like, oh, you got something offensive to say? Add five to your resistance. Like, <laughs> How much do you want to say it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, your bigotry just cost you a 5% incline. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. Uh, so so when you when you were doing this for the Trevor project, um do you feel like you um reached your goal like to 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 get people talking to pe have people have that conversation? Yes, and in the midst of all of the angry or terrifying DMs. There were so many wonderful messages from especially grateful parents who like I have, uh, I had t-shirts like, so my mantra for the, for the event was the only pace is forward because I wanted to remind people that first of all, everyone kept asking me like, how fast are you going to run it? I'm like, as fast as it takes to finish the <laughs> day. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like that's an arbitrary thing. And finally, I got to the point where I was like, really, the only pace I need to go is forward. And that also became a big visual in terms of I, I want to hold the line for the LGBTQ youth that I refuse to have us push back. And so the only pace I am willing to go is forward. And so the T-shirt I had, Arrow is my business. Um, so the Arrow Track Club is on the front. Only Paces Forward was on the back of the shirt, partly because I also wanted anyone who purchased the shirt where 100% of the profits went to the Trevor Project is people forget I can't put a rainbow on everybody's shirt because I have worn those shirts where I have been spit on or had threats. And I don't want somebody to wear something that could threaten them. Something people don't even realize is a lot of times when you see LGBTQ clothing, they put the rainbow on the front. And the reason for that is if it's on the back, you can't see someone attack you. Do you think that Nike, Adidas, Peloton, any of them are thinking about where their logo is at, that somebody might attack them for that reason? No. Not generally. Like that's not crossing their mind. Um, and so this gave people a safe way to share and represent. And so, so many parents have bought shirts for their kids. And I had parents who said, my child always wanted to be active, but they didn't feel like there was a space for them. And running is so freeing for them. Like it's not like, open the door. My mom would always be like, it's free. Open the door. Go ahead. <laughs> like, I'm like, it's not really free. Like, cause shoes and everything gets so expensive, but you get the point. Like you can open the door. The roads are open unless you were living in Buffalo last week. Then it was like, it was closed because of terrible blizzards. <laughs> um, 
But to hear those stories of those kids feeling seen, feeling confident for the first time, that's what I, that's why I was out there. And that made me so happy. And to get like messages and like, they sent me like little posters and stuff that they made. And there were kids who came out to some of the runs with posters and sharing. And it just makes me like so happy to be able to, to do this tiny thing. He's in the grand scheme of things, it's tiny, but it also let those kids know that there's someone like them who is healthy, who's happy, who is successful and who is an athlete and they can be the same. And so that was, that was certainly the hope. And I feel like I was successful in that. And I'm going to continue that. Um, hopefully. I mean, because well, your Garmin won't leave you alone about it. <laughs> I was like, the best part would be like an hour after a 50 K and he'd be like, you haven't moved in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I deserve to sit Garmin. <laughs> Garmin like, you should just keep walking like Forrest Gump this life. Like just, you're never allowed to stop. Just keep going. <laughs> Garmin is Latin for black hole. Oh, and my Apple Watch does the same thing. It's like, it's like, uh, hey, hey, you've been sitting down all morning. I know you ran yesterday, and I know you ran a lot, but it's you know you've been pretty that lazy was yesterday. Today. Yeah, come on, let's go. There's, I think there's a person who did like a, a Instagram reel or a YouTube video where they coached as an Apple Watch, a Garmin watch, like all the different ones, and like Apple was super like snippety like you're not worth it no rings for you like <laughs> Garmin was like I won't even talk to you you don't even matter you've stopped trying you gave up like it was just it was so funny because I'm like it's true it's funny yeah. because it's true <laughs> like, See, that's, that's why I don't wear those I have an internal monologue for that I don't <laughs> I don't need a watch to help. You know what's funny is there was a time, I know, young people listening to this, there was a long time, long, long ago, where your brain used to say, wow, I've been sitting a while. I should get up. There wasn't this little thing that vibrated on you that said you should get up. <laughs> now we're not told to get up, to eat, to drink water, to do anything. It's like we don't know how to live. That is sad and yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. I do pay a lot of attention to that. But I was thinking conversely, I because I was running today and I was like, you know, um, before I would have had an Apple Watch, I would have only known how far I was going because like I was at a park and it had, you know, the, the mile markers. That's literally all. That's the only way I would have known. And, and I only would have known how long it took. Like I wouldn't have been able to do my paces other than to be like, oh, it took about two hours. You know what I mean? <laughs> so there's good to it, too. But yeah, it can be a little overboard with the, the direction that we go. Yes. So uh, what is your leaderboard name? Oh yeah. So Peloton. My... <laughs> <laughs> what's that? What's that company we brought us here in this first place? <laughs> uh, so my leaderboard name is struggle guru. That is the leaderboard name, which actually is also the name of a book I wrote, um, which discusses how, if we want to really like discipline and master ourselves, that our greatest ally and training partner is struggle. Um, and how we find that, how we tap into that. So that's how struggle guru became the leaderboard name. I love Not that. Not because I think that I am the guru of struggle by any means, <laughs> but I also like guru is a very important word in yoga lineage. And so it's something that I definitely respect. And I think that people who have any connection to that recognize it as like a mastery. So is a nod to my connection there too. What kind of, uh, what kind of yoga do you teach? Um, so most of my yoga is a vinyasa yoga. So flow, um, patterns, but I also teach Hatha. Um, it just depends. Like, I mean, those are the two that I'm really trained in, but I will personally practice in a variety of, of lineages. Ashtanga is perhaps the strictest and with as much running as I do, I end up in like, the same three movements that my teacher would allow me to go through. Because most Ashtanga is like, they, your teacher gives you this part of the sequence and you come in during, like in a Mysore studio, you come in during a certain time period and you perform that and everybody is performing their own um, sequence in there. And your teacher is then adjusting you. But I would just end up in the circle <laughs> doing the same three because I'm not... I'm not progressing in a way that would keep me safely in a position for that. So I stick to more vinyasa flow more than anything. Gotcha. Or some, I really love some yoga nidra, which is like, you're just 
above sleep. So you're not sleeping, but it helps to relax the mind and body as much as possible. It's really great for the nervous system resetting. And so you're coached sort of through this relaxation process, but a very heightened consciousness. It's wonderful. Um, like if you do it for 20 minutes, it's a great reset during, during the day to help you focus. And now I think they like the neuroscientists who are researching it are calling it like non deep sleep something. I can't remember the exact thing, but there's, there's a lot of neuroscience actually behind the benefits of doing the, the yoga nidra. So, so it helps you reset between the death threats. <laughs> <laughs> I could see why that. I'm like, yeah, that's. Yeah. All right, I feel great. I am renewed. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm not a piece of crap. <laughs> Let's move on with the day. <laughs> so, do you have a uh, favorite instructor? Oh, you know, I, when I saw, like, I, I you sent me a couple questions to think about, and that was one of them. And it's so hard because instructors vary for me depending on where. I am in my training, where I am in my life. Um, so I will say this. <laughs> First of all, I always encourage everyone, check out as many instructors as possible. Check them also often because they might not have resonated with you the first time around, but maybe you're at a different stage in your life and their verbiage or their music or their class style is suddenly really helpful to you. So don't just get stuck in that, that lane. Um, but I'll give you three that are like always kind of moving around for me. Um, Robin is one that I definitely resonate with. And the reason is because she has been the only instructor that I've gone on any class that actually acknowledges non-binary riders. She specifically calls them out. And so I have saved rides of hers because she calls them out. And that helps me feel very seen and also brings an awareness to a community that people are still trying to kind of figure out where we, we fit into things. So I appreciate that. And I also appreciate a good neon yellow tight to kick my butt in a divine. <laughs> you will get it. <laughs> I know what she's wearing it. Even if she's like in a core class of like, we are screwed. Like it is, I'm like, by the time I'm done her five minute ab class in those yellow tights, I should be able to wash laundry on this. Like it's just so good, right? Like, or I could wash laundry on hers because hers are definitely fine, right? Um, and then it, Christine and I uh, have a, a friendship and coaching and athlete relationship. So certainly I appreciate Christine on our long rides, especially because I do a lot of power zone endurance. So I appreciate her. And then Jess Sims is sort of my like all around most diverse. I enjoy her strength, her tread, her bike boot camps, um, and her no nonsense. Like I, I am going to make you hurt and I'm not mad about it. Like, <laughs> You know, like well, she's I love so it. cheery when she does it. She's so cheery. I don't know how she pulls it off. You know what though? I really appreciated when she did the Boston Marathon this year and Kirsten Ferguson had videotaped in all of her stories her crawling back to it. I was like, Yeah, see, there are things that are hard for you too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wish you ill, but I am thinking hard about how you are feeling right now. I actually <laughs> saw her out there running the race because I was in Boston for some of my athletes running, but I was like, yes, I see this. I get this. But uh, she is. She does have a smile while she's like, I'm going to ruin this song for you. And I, I, that's just how life goes. And we're going to do burpees <laughs> and all the things. But I mean, all the instructors are wonderful. It just depends on what you need and when you need it. So I'll give you those three. But check okay. them all out, people. Don't, don't get caught up or hung up on what I say or what anyone else says because you never know. Well, and that's, that's good advice. And I was going to ask if you had any advice for people who are just finding Peloton. Do you have anything that you want to add to that? Any other advice? Um, I think the biggest thing that I could say to newbies and longtime lifers is don't get so caught up in the metrics. Don't get so caught up in the blue check mark. I have been there. I have been obsessed over the blue. I was at an Airbnb for an event I was teaching at. And the walls were so thin that the only quiet spot was the bathroom. And I was doing Peloton strength workouts next to a toilet. <laughs> now, some will be like, that's commitment. In retrospect, that's insanity. Okay. That's, <laughs> like, I have a video of me somewhere in the archives of me doing push ups next to a toilet just for a blue check mark. 
I think we should probably talk to somebody about that. I did talk <laughs> to somebody about that. And that's why I don't do it anymore. Um, <laughs> especially a stranger's toilet. Like, what was I thinking? There are so many things. Um, you know, so don't get caught up in the metrics. Don't get caught up in having to do the longest or the hardest, quote unquote, hardest workouts on there. Like, be drawn to what feels good because consistency is what matters. And if doing five minute yoga and five minute meditation and then a 10 minute ride is what's keeping you consistently showing up, stick with that. It doesn't matter how long you are on there, just that you're finding something that works for you. Cause I watch so many people obsessed over like, must stack all the classes, must do all the hit, must do all this. I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna tell you something as a coach. If you can do four hit classes back to back to back, you didn't do it correctly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, you know, when they say go all out, but you still had enough, quote unquote, to go another three rounds, that's not all out. <laughs> that's literally the opposite of the definition of all out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. I never follow cues when I do like like my long run day and I like take a bunch of classes back to back. I never follow cues. I just kind of do what I want to do. <laughs> or I'll play these like, you know, and they're, they, they're like, add half of a point of speed. I'm like, point one, it will be. You know, I like, I play games with it. <laughs> you know what? It's funny. So Alex is now a tread instructor, yes. right? And I did one of his runs the other day. And he's like, all right, we're going to do a run for three minutes. Hit 9.0. I'm like, 9.0? That's a six minute pace, buddy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> who is running casually outside of like Bex Gentry? Right. At, or Susie Chan yes. at a six at a 9.0. <laughs> I'm like, and he's just saying it so casually. And I'm also watching him. I'm like, okay, I've watched enough runners in my life. <laughs> that's cute but i know you're treading at that speed that might work for a newbie which is my other thing to tell newbies don't be fooled by how quickly you see their legs turning over because you could be at a zero on that resistance that is so true that's why when people are like i didn't i didn't match the call outs i'm like well whatever i mean whatever you could do is fine like it doesn't have to be that it doesn't you're not a failure because you didn't do what the instructor said like it's totally fine uh, but i think you get more confident with that over time you know like it's it's not something that you feel like you can necessarily start with but i think as you go through <laughs> with the, the stages of Peloton ownership, you come to that realization eventually. <laughs> right, and just know that there's always gonna be Joe or Jane or Jim Bob, no offense to Jim Bob, who's gonna put it at 100 resistance, but be crawling at a 22 <laughs> cadence. And I'm like, okay, so this person is just standing up and they're just, this is what they look like. <laughs> those of you who can't see it i am moving slow motion okay? barely, they, in fact they decided that they needed to make it a family event and their kids are exhausted from pulling on the pedals with them <laughs> like they're like oh i'm glad peloton row came out because my kids have been doing it for years to get my pedals so i could be number one on the leaderboard <laughs> Oh, hilarious. I see you small <laughs> children doing all the work for your parents. I see you. You're working hard on those matters. It's like a Dickens novel. <laughs> exactly. Please, well, Dad, I just won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, not only for getting my Dickens references, but <laughs> but for joining us today. We greatly appreciate it. Before we let you go. Uh, just remind everybody where they can find you and, and all your stuff or help the Trevor Project. Yeah, so the easiest way is probably to go to my website. It's the shortest to remember, so it's just kbwaters.com. Um, it'll link you to my Instagram, so which is kbeverlywaters. So that's why kbwaters.com is pretty easy. And there's links on, on there to connect to the Trevor Project if they want to buy a t-shirt. Um, so if you want to have an Aero Track Club t-shirt and wear it, again, all the profits there are going to to the Trevor Project. Um, so there are lots of different colors. There's sweatshirts too, because you know we're in a cold season right now. Maybe not when you hear this, but there's a, <laughs> there's a hoodie as well. They're really nice, very soft, and helping kids be seen and know that there's support, which is what the Trevor Project is doing. So I'm, I'm grateful for those resources. 
Awesome. Well, thank you very much for taking time out of your day and for your patience with our <laughs> technology, technological <laughs> snafu. Not a problem. I mean, <laughs> listen, you're just lucky this wasn't a Peloton live class and I missed my 1000th shout out. That's all <laughs> <laughs> I would have literally been so stressed out if that had happened. I would have been like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I feel bad when I see it on the on like the Peloton message boards. I'm like, let me just make you a big balloon because it like your your heart is hurting and I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you. And thank you for everything you do every day for people and, and motivating them and inspiring them and reminding them that that forward is a pace. I think uh, I think all of us can be reminded of that on a daily basis. And it's a good thing. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Without. So I guess that brings this episode to a close until next week. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me over on Facebook at facebook.com slash Crystal D. O'Keefe. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and the Peloton leaderboard at Clip Out Crystal. And you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. You can find the show online, facebook.com slash The Clip Out. While you're there, like the page, join the group, and don't forget our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash The Clip Out. So that's it for this one. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, keep pedaling. And rowing. And running. And guiding. <laughs> <laughs>